एस एल टी मोबिजा दी कनेक्शन एस एल टी मोबिजा दी कनेक्शन Tonight, the big plan. Sri Lanka's roadmap 2021 unveiled today plotting the country's path to economic recovery. The central bank will continue the prevailing accommodative monetary policy intent to establish a permanent single digit interest rate in the economy. Stick to the plan. Concerns raised over risks from Ukrainian tour groups or itinerary jaunts as another batch arrives today. Neighborly visit. India's external affairs minister arrives tomorrow on a two-day official visit. Bubble trouble. England's Sri Lanka tour gets off to a rocky start as Moin Ali tests positive on arrival. All that and much more coming up on First at Nine this Monday, the 4th of January, 2021. Nava Sunlight Sakura. Then Dikkal Pavathina Sakura Mal Suandin. From Adha Verana. This is Ada there and now first at 9 live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to First at 9. I'm Hamke Kanai. Now the country's economic roadmap for 2021 was unveiled by Central Bank Governor Professor W.D. Lakshman today in the backdrop of a 3.9% contraction in the economic growth for 2020. while announcing the maintaining of a single digit interest rate regime for the year continued monetary and fiscal intervention was outlined including an accommodative monetary policy and keeping the country's inflation at a stable 4 to 6% the central bank governor also stated that he expects private sector credit to expand by 14% this year with a comp- comprehensive mid term fiscal framework in place to achieve a deficit of 4% of gdp Central Bank Governor Professor W D Lakshman presented the country's economic roadmap for the year which will set the route to recovery for an economy looking to post a comeback from the 3.9% contraction of last year. Sri Lanka suffered a notable economic setback in 2020 particularly in the second quarter. With inflation remaining under control, the central bank took multiple measures on an unprecedented scale. to help support the real economy affected by the pandemic these measures together with stimulus programs led to a better than expected recovery during the third quarter of 2020 the outbreak of the second wave of covid 19 however disturbed the momentum of economic recovery to some extent during the final quarter of the year the marginal decline in the first and the relatively large decline in the second quarter of 2020 were followed by a marginally positive growth in the third third quarter with observed developments in the fourth quarter we expect the economy to record an annual contraction of around 3.9% continued support through monetary and fiscal intervention is essential to provide adequate impetus to the economy amidst the challenging domestic and global macroeconomic conditions therefore the central bank will continue the prevailing accommodative monetary policy stance in 2021 we would of course be closely monitoring developments to avoid any strong demand driven pressures on inflationary trend growth conducive policy measures introduced in 2020 we believe would take a while to be effectively transmitted to the real economy to catch up with the lost momentum and to substantially realign itself with the envisaged high growth path the economy would need some time until the economy reaches its full potential it is unlikely that there would be any notable domestic demand pressures the central bank is confident that inflation will remain within the targeted range of 4 to 6% over the medium term proactive government policy i expected to address supply side factors help in the central bank's effort to maintain inflation in the envisaged range 
the central bank intends to establish a permanent single digit interest rate structure in the economy. We will remain focused on maintaining a market interest rate at single digit levels going forward. This is imperative to promote investment and entrepreneurship in the country, the needed foundation for sustained high economic growth. The central bank recognizes that Fixed income earners, particularly senior citizens, depending on retirement pensions, will be adversely affected by low deposit interest rates. The sustainable solution to this problem lies in long-term income growth and institutional developments involving mutual funds, insurance and annuity schemes, pension and superannuation schemes. The government has also proposed to introduce a contributory pension scheme to assist those in public enterprise as well as the private sector. The central bank expects credit to the private sector to expand by around 14% in 2021 and at least by around 12 to 12.5% annually over the medium term. Monetary policy will also be reoriented towards supporting the identified sectors of the economy and lending targets to priority sectors and winning industries will be introduced during the year. Overall, while working within a framework of market economy, the performance of the open economy policies introduced from 1977 onwards will be reviewed vigorously so that the country and its economic agents could follow a focused approach to becoming an industrial economy. The central bank's stance on allowing market forces to determine the exchange rate will remain unchanged going forward. However, any excessive volatility in the exchange rate due to speculative moves by some market participants or cash flow mismatches would be strictly monitored and corrective action taken. In the past, we borrowed from the international markets and multilateral agencies to develop the nation, and as a result, our foreign debt has increased notably. The successful implementation of the envisaged medium-term fiscal framework of the government is imperative to achieve the needed fiscal space and to attain targeted goal of a budget deficit of 4% of GDP by 2025. Meanwhile, the government has created the conducive environment for investment through necessary tax reforms as well as legislative reform. Further, the government has announced that it would adopt a selective approach in resorting to foreign funded projects while providing opportunities for domestic investors. Proposals in the budget 2021 to develop the Colombo Port City Special Economic Zone as an attractive business gateway linking markets in the East and the West to promote the Kalambu and Hambantota ports as commodity trading hubs and to establish a modern investment zone for local and foreign private investors are expected to entice a sizable flow of foreign capital into the country in the period ahead. Now, Sri Lanka's fourth batch of Ukrainian tourists arrived in the country today. However, concerns have been raised following allegations of the tourists currently in the country going off itinerary. With that, the media unit of the Minister of Tourism issued a communique stating that instructions have been issued by the subject minister to the relevant authorities overseeing the pilot project to ensure all health guidelines introduced are properly adhered to. Under the pilot project to recommence tourism, the fourth batch of Ukrainian tourists arrived in the country today. The aircraft carrying 97 tourists landed at the Matala Rajapaksha International Airport, bringing the total number of Ukrainian tourists in the country to 656. Sanchari Sidukaran ne Nirodha Nevana Kala Sima Tuladima. Me Sidukaranu Sabane Jaiva Arakshita Bubula Yana Sankal Peatate Ehidi E Sanchagin Sa Gatena Aya Anivarem Jaiva Arakshita Bubula Tulama City Tui own Tamunge Nives Balayama E Awastavedi Sidunokalutui Eva Gema Sancharkin Megating Pitatunar Passe Sri Lankikin Taudurta Sati Deka Kalak Nirodha Nevi Mem Passe Tamai Abnavat Samaj Samane Jana Jivita Avatirna. 
in another development, the Central Cultural Fund announced today that the Ukrainian tourist visit to the Polonaro and Sigiriya's tourist zones was cancelled. The group of tourists was scheduled to visit Polonaro and Sigiriya today and tomorrow. The relevant tourist sites were closed off for locals as Ukrainian tourists were to travel in a bio bubble as a precautionary measure against the spread of COVID-19. However, the Central Cultural Fund said that as the scheduled visit has been cancelled, the Polonaru and Sigiri tourist zones are now open for locals as per usual. In the meantime, SJB parliamentarian Dr. Harsha De Silva posted what he alleges to be a letter sent by chairperson of the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority, Kimali Fernando, to the Minister of Tourism, Prasanna Ranathunga. It says that it was through media that the SLTDA came to know of a group of tourists from the Ukrainian arrivals, excursions to the Yala National Park and Mirissa for whale watching. It adds that the agreement at the task force meeting had been for tour organisers to provide detailed itineraries in advance, including details of the persons involved in the excursions. The letter, however, notes the Director General of the SLTDA had tried to obtain the necessary information in this regard from the travel agents to no avail. The letter dated the 2nd of January says, By then, the SLTDA had not received any of the relevant information from the promoter of the project or from the travel agents concerned. Further, quote, We are gravely concerned and seek your urgent intervention as when we requested information, it was informed that he is working with the Presidential Task Force, unquote. The SLTDA chairman notes that it is expected that all details related to the excursions are provided to the SLTDA before the commencement of such tours to enable them to keep the Ministry of Health and the COVID task force informed. Meanwhile, the media unit of the Ministry of Tourism issued a communique saying that Subject Minister Prasanna Ranatunga instructed the authorities to ensure there won't be a repeat of such a situation which arose following the Ukrainian tourist visit to the Yala National Park. It said that the instructions were given during a meeting worked off today to review the progress of the tourism pilot project and issues pertaining to it. The minister had emphasized that all health guidelines introduced for the project must be properly adhered to and that all entities linked to it, including the Tourism Development Authority, must give greater attention to the matter. The communique says that the SLTDA must also undertake the coordination of tours to the 12 pre-designated locations. Safeguard Hand Sanitizer Navatama Nishpadana Pella Neeru Kimatthi Vyakata now, in the meantime, a joint media briefing was held this morning between the tourism industry take stakeholders where the exact procedures involved in the travel bubble being used in the pilot project were clarified. At the media briefing, it was revealed that the tourists will only be allowed to travel outside the travel bubble after the 14 days of quarantine are completed. President of the Hotels Association of Sri Lanka, Sanat Ukwatta, and Chairman of the Jetwing Symphony, Hiran Kure, outlined the procedures for tourists arriving in the country under the travel bubble rules and regulations. There are 101 hotels which have been given the safe and secure certification, and those hotels can be located all over the country. So level one hotels are basically hotels, as I said, when the tourists arrive, they go into a level one hotel which can be booked directly or through travel agents or tour operators. And they will stay there for a minimum seven days and then they can switch to another level one hotel located anywhere in the country. But they can't go out to the community. Only after the first and the second PCR test done, they will be taken in a bubble form to visit various sites which have been approved by the Minister of Health and uh, relevant people in the cultural site, the cultural ministry has to approve. If it's a religious site, relevant temple has to approve. They will not have any direct contact with the community until 14 days are over. And after that only, they can be released to the community or they can even go back to their own countries uh, within this period. The whole objective is to open the country for international visitors. And the pilot project, as it's called pilot project, it's only an experimental project to see how we can cope up with the, the new 
norms, the new guidelines and how we can handle tourists. Once they are certified, you have to register with the tourist board to be level one because the hotels that are certified may opt not to be in level one as well. Because once you are in level one, you can't have any other guests. No Sri Lankans can go in. Staff have to stay in the hotel for the 14 days. So there are a lot of other restrictions as well. So of the 101 hotels that are already certified, my estimate is probably 30, 40 hotels will opt for that level one option because that means they can't have any other functions. Other people can't come and use the uh, F&B facilities, the other facilities. So that is a very controlled hotel. The guests will be allowed to use the pool, the spa, fan B outlets, the bar and everything, but within that premises. In the meantime, the president of the Sri Lanka Association of Inbound Tour Operators says that the pilot project is not only restricted to a select few countries, but is open to all travellers willing to visit the country. The government opened this pilot project to all the countries, but Ukraine flights, they started within this pilot project. Before the 19th of January, all of us are allowed to bring passengers, but they have to follow the guideline, which after following those guidelines, anyone can operate. As a two operators association, we actually try to market the product from the middle of January. We should be all hopeful that the airport will be open on the on the 21st or 23rd of January. As you know, the outbound market pre-COVID, we had 5 billion worth of business. And now during COVID, it has dropped to about 1 billion. So what I have suggested to the minister is for the outbound market to, to regain his momentum again, quarantine period to be for only for seven days. And like we do for diplomats, that the quarantine should done at home. So if they do it for seven days at home, I think the people will start travelling again. Otherwise, as you all know, we have more than 200 to 300 travel agents. All are bleeding. Some have closed down. So, and we have not got any uh, approvals as yet. Schools located outside the Western Province and isolated areas will reopen for grades 2 to 13 on the 11th of January as planned with strict adherence to safety protocols. In the meantime, Minister of Education Professor G.L. Pires announced today that schools located in the Western Province will reopen for the 25th, on the 25th of this month rather, for grade 11 students sitting for the GCE Ordinary Level Examination in March. The Ministry of Education recently announced that schools located outside the Western Province and also in isolated areas will reopen for the first term for grades 2 to 5 on the 11th of this month. With grades 6 to 13 already having resumed activities prior to school holidays, all grades except grade 1 will be going back to school on the 11th of this month. They however have to be located outside the Western Province and any other isolated areas to resume schooling and will have to adhere to health and safety protocols. A date for the reopening of schools for grade 1, however, is yet to be announced. January Ecolosanada, Basnaira Palata, Ha, Divene, Sesu Palatula, Hudakala Karanala, Police Vasantula, Pihitla Divena, Pasal Hera, Ansielu Pasal Vella, Prating Vipanti, Utakara. Emma Gondi, Sieta Mayatatu, Perepa Salut, Yali, Aram Bivino. January Havana Badada Sita, the Havana Irida, the Qua, Sam Pasalakam, Mema Vedapilevela, Padanam Kerigana, Guru de Guru, Saga Trapeno, Abe de Bompian in Illa Sitino, May Vedapilevela to Sambandela, Eage Adahas Udahas, Apata, Labadin Nikil. January Ecolosanada, Pasalet Pemina Vita, Darwan, Gior de Hitopo, Pantivella, no, Ilanga Pantir the Mai, Sasin, E Pantias on the High, Pelapot Nikut Kerin. The minister also said that schools located in the western province, however, will reopen for grade 11 students who are set to sit for the GCE Ordinary Level examination in March on the 25th of this month. Grade 11 students at schools located within isolated areas in the western province, however, will not be resuming schooling until further notice. Basnaira Palata has Sesu Palatula, Hudakala, the police was some to the Pihita, the parcel, Hera, Anek Parcel. Ecoloswana Shreni Panti, Janavari, Visi Passwana Sanduda, Aram Bagirimata, Api, Dadi Utsahang, Martuma Se, Patwana, Saman Nepila Vibhage, Pratipala, Juni Mase Avasana Venavita, Nikut Kirimata, Api, Sam Prat Nakma Darano, Saspila Panti, Juli Mase, Aram Bagirimata, Pulvano, Usaspila Vibhage, Pratipala, Mayaurde, Martu Avasani, who April Muller, Nikut Kirimata Pulvan Vegela, Api, Vishwaskarno. 
Now, Chief Epidemiologist of the Epidemiology Unit, Dr. Sudat Samarivira, says that mass scale rapid antigen tests will be conducted in selected areas covering all the districts. In the meantime, a document published by Oxford University Press for the Infectious Diseases Society of America shows that areas with a higher incidence of dengue fever are less likely to experience COVID-19 cases and deaths, raising the possibility of cross-immunity between these two viruses. The total number of COVID-19-related deaths in Sri Lanka rose to 215 with the confirmation of two fatalities last evening and two more this evening. The victims are residents of the Kaludara, Colombo and Ratnapura districts. During the course of yesterday, 403 infections were detected from 20 districts across the Sri Lanka. Although the daily case number was low in the Colombo district on Saturday, it returned to top spot with 81 infections yesterday. Apart from Colombo, 56 infections were recorded from Kandy, while 30 from Gampa, 27 from Kalutara, 20 from Trincomalee, 18 from Nurelia, and 17 infections each from Ampara and Kegal were also confirmed. In addition, 14 infections each from Kurunagala and Ratnapura, 6 from Batiklo, 4 from Gaul and Jaffna, 3 from Matra and 2 from Matale were also detected. The districts of Puttalam, Hambantota, Munuragala, Anuradhapura and Kilinochi reported one infection each yesterday. A further 85 infections were also detected. However, their respective localities could not be confirmed. Meanwhile, Chief Epidemiologist at the Epidemiology Unit, Dr. Sudat Samaravira, says that mass-scale rapid antigen testing is conducted in selected areas of all districts to detect infections. At the moment, there is a small reduction of the number of cases reporting daily, but still we are reporting cases. The main hotspots are Colombo Municipal Council area and also Western Province. At the moment, sporadically, COVID-19 cases are reporting from other districts as well. So in order to identify all the cases in these districts, what we are doing is that we are identifying certain areas, especially town areas, and doing mass scale rapid antigen testing or PCR testing to identify all the possible cases of COVID-19 and also to identify their close contacts and quarantine them. So with these measures, we will be able to contain this disease in other areas in the country and that will help to eliminate or make zero transmission in these districts. In the meantime, the total number of recoveries from COVID-19 increased to 37,817, with 565 patients being given the all-clear to leave hospital today. That brought the country's number of active coronavirus cases down to 7,210. In another development, a document published by Oxford University Press for the Infectious Diseases Society of America shows that areas with a higher influence of dengue fever were likely to experience COVID-19 cases and deaths, raising the possibility of cross-immunity between the two viruses. The document is based on an ecological study in Brazil, other Latin American countries and Asia. It says that although the dengue virus and SARS-CoV-2 are from different families, there are reports that antibodies for dengue can be reactive against SARS-CoV-2, leading for false positive tests for COVID-19. Reports also say that it is, however, unknown whether previous dengue episodes can produce some level of immunity against COVID-19. The main finding of the present study was a decreased mortality at up to 60 days among COVID-19 patients who had a previous history of symptomatic dengue infection. We will see you shortly. Stay with us. Ceylon Bank, the bank with a heart. Now, India's Minister of External Affairs, Dr. S. Jay Shankar, is set to arrive in Sri Lanka tomorrow on an official visit until the 7th. The Foreign Ministry says that during the Indian External Affairs Minister's visit, he will have bilateral meetings with President Gothabi Rajpaksha, Prime Minister Mahindra Rajpaksha, and Foreign Minister Dinesh Gunawardana. Dr. Jay Shankar's visit to the island marks the first arrival of a high level foreign dignitary in Sri Lanka in 2021, and it will also become the first foreign visit for India's Minister of External Affairs in the new year. The Foreign Ministry added that through high level engage exchanges, rather, both sides are looking forward to strengthen the bilateral relationship in multiple areas of cooperation. It also says that the visit is arranged through the air bubble concept amidst the COVID 19 travel restrictions in both countries. The visit comes at the invitation of Foreign Minister Dinesh Gunawardana. A haul of over 200 kilograms of narcotics was seized by the Sri Lanka Navy with the assistance of the Police Narcotics Bureau today. 
a special joint operation had been launched in the seas 25 kilometers off Maravilla and Nigumbo today. The operation had been in the making for around a month with the collaboration of the Police Narcotic Bureau, the Navy and the Criminal Investigation Unit of the Nigumbo Division. 126.78 kilograms of the narcotic, known as ICE, and 88.12 kilograms of hashish were found during the operation, while the multi-day trawler which transported the drugs was seized. The police said the vessel owner from the area of Tudava in Maravilla, its navigator, and two others were arrested. We are conducting further investigation and it has been revealed that the local traffic of this drug deal is one Honda Ranji, alias Ranjit Kumara of Kandana. Now at present he is in the remand prison in respect of a drug offence. He is one of the drug traffickers in respect of this particular raid. And we are conducting further investigation and we are ascertaining evidence in order to arrest the other remaining suspects. In addition to that, it has been revealed that the trawler was loaded with these drugs in the international sea from a vessel started from a Middle East country. Business confidence in the country for the month of December hit a yearly low of 83 points on the index with apparent high taxes and the effect of the second wave or second wave high on the list of the concerns for corporates. However, the implementation of a national vaccination program is expected to improve the index in the near term. The country's business confidence index has recorded a continued decline, falling by eight basis points from the previous month to 83 in December. This represents the lowest point in the index for the entirety of 2020. Nielsen's director of consumer insights, Terika Mianadenia, stated that reflecting this dismal situation, both the business confidence index and the consumer confidence index continue to head south. And although both indices have not yet reached post Easter Sunday attack levels, they are steadily approaching their all time lows. In terms of sensitivities, Mianadenia said that the most pressing issue for businesses today continues to be the impact of the coronavirus, with high taxes and bribery and corruption being next in line. Meanwhile, from a national perspective, the spread of the virus was the most pressing issue, while apprehension regarding the economy appears to have grown as well. Miana Denia cautioned that the direction of the BCI and the CCI will be dependent on what comes next, and if the situation continues to be the same, both indices are likely to move down further. Meanwhile, on a positive note, the report added that as far as Sri Lanka is concerned, the timing of implementing a vaccination program in the country could well dictate whether the index moves up or down in the near term. Now taking a look at the Colombo Bulls, Sri Lankan shares ended 1.8% higher today, closing at a more than a five-year high driven by gains in consumer staples and industrial stocks. The all-share price index ended up 1.78% at 6,894.98, its highest closing level since early December 2015, while the S&P SL20 index of more liquid stocks gained 54.38 points to close at 2,692.48. Now, here's a brief report on today's market performance. The market entered a major bullish phase today as the ASPI spiked by around 120 points. So the ASPI uh, reached uh, 6,894 points today, closing in on the 6,900 mark as well. So with this, what we are seeing is that the retail community has become extremely bullish in the market because we saw some of the retail favorite counters gathering significant amount of uh, momentum. In addition to that, we saw construction and building material counters uh, gathering buying interest. Further, in the blue chip segment, also we saw a significant amount of buying interest with banking sectors taking a center stage there. So with this, what we are seeing is significant amount of uh, positivity has been uh, generated among the uh, investor community and we saw the turnover closing in on the 5 billion mark, ending at 4.97 billion rupees for today.
Now, the England tour of Sri Lanka has gotten off to a rough start already after all-rounder Moin Ali tested positive for COVID-19 today. Ali will now self-isolate for 10 days, while Chris Wokes too will have to isolate after being identified as a close contact. England are in Sri Lanka for a two-match test series that begins on the 14th of January with both matches being played in goal. Ali is likely to miss the first test as Sri Lanka's government protocols require any positive patients to quarantine for 10 days. The England Cricket Board said that the touring party will be PCR tested for a second time tomorrow morning, after which the team will train for the first time on Wednesday. And that's it from all of us here at First at Nine. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.